Ukraine is one of the most corrupt countries in the world. These were the words of Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban last December around the time of Ukraine's EU accession talks. Interesting choice of words considering Hungary is perceived as having the worst public sector corruption record in the European Union, according to a report published by Transparency International in January 2023. Since the start of the full-scale invasion, some American politicians have also claimed, we have no idea where our money has gone in Ukraine. The American people, the taxpayers of this country, deserve to know where their money is going and how it's being spent. Never mind the fact there has been no proof the billions of dollars that have helped Ukraine survive and fight through these past two years have disappeared in some corrupt scheme. But I'm not here today to prove whether or not Hungary is more corrupt than Ukraine, or to debunk every baseless claim made by Ukraine haters around the world that feeds right into the hands of Russian propaganda that would have you believe Ukraine is some bastion of corruption. I'm also not here to try to prove that corruption doesn't exist in Ukraine. It does, unfortunately. My name is Lillianne Bivings, I'm the business editor with the Kiev Independent, and I'm here to do some explaining on corruption in Ukraine as part of our video explainer series. For more, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna give you a little history lesson a bit later in this video, but before I do, let's get some facts out there. Ukraine does struggle with corruption. Despite the progress it has made following the Euromaidan revolution that sought to rid the country of Russian influence and break free of a system run by oligarchs and their empires, it is still considered the second most corrupt country in Europe after Russia, according to Transparency International. But here's the thing, as someone very wise once said, the reason you know so much about corruption in Ukraine is because no one talks about corruption in Ukraine more than Ukrainians. In fact, Ukrainians consider corruption the country's second most serious problem after the Russian invasion, according to a poll conducted by the Kyiv International Institute of Sociology in 2023. And even now, during the full-scale war, with everything else they have to deal with, Ukrainians have fought on the domestic front too to expose and stand up to corruption happening right now, right here. Yuri Nikolov, a Ukrainian journalist, broke stories about the Ukrainian defense ministry paying inflated prices for supplies. 46 cents for eggs that should have cost 5 cents. 86 dollars for winter coats that were worth just 29 bucks. Following the news, Defense Minister Alexei Reznikov was fired and replaced. Nikolov is just one of the examples of Ukrainian journalists who have been working to expose corruption in Ukraine. In exposing corruption in Ukraine, Ukrainians aren't just pushing their sometimes reluctant officials and society to change. They are showing the world that Ukraine is a free, democratic society that is working to change itself for the better. Russia and its propagandists around the world would have you think that Ukraine is a failed state, run over by corruption and apparently Nazis? Again, no one serious would try to tell you that corruption isn't a problem in Ukraine. But in discussing corruption in Ukraine, we need a bit of context. Let's get into it. But before we get into the history of why corruption has been so pervasive in Ukraine and the larger post-Soviet space, let's get some definitions on the table. First, what does the word corruption even mean? And what forms does it take? And what are we actually talking about when we say a place or institution is corrupt? Corruption is dishonest or criminal behavior usually committed by people or organizations that have a position of power and who use that authority for their own benefit or gain. It generally takes the form of bribery, double dealing, or defrauding investors, banks, or the people. Sound familiar? It probably does, since you've likely heard about these things happening in your own country at some point. Think Ponzi scheme, or even the recent headline-making fraud scandal around Sam Bankman-Fried and his FTX cryptocurrency exchange. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's get into why corruption is prevalent in post-Soviet countries that are still very much developing countries and economies. To do so, we have to go back in time a bit. In the Soviet Union, people struggled to acquire basic goods and services. It is a known fact that to get around these shortages, people developed informal networks of contacts and people using a system of favors to get what they needed. When the Soviet Union collapsed, an incredibly difficult period economically in this part of the world, these informal networks were already in place when people needed them the most due to the economic and social uncertainties of the day. At the same time, there was a rush to create a market economy and privatization of important state assets took place at the advantage of a small group 
much faster than a lot of the necessary legislation to create a fair economy and society. Instead of a smooth transition, a chaotic capitalism or wild capitalism, as it's sometimes called here, took place, which was fertile ground for corruption. Many of Ukraine's oligarchs got their start in the chaos of these days, taking over assets quickly and building empires any which way they wanted. In the wake of all of this, Ukraine unfortunately kept slipping in the ratings of corruption indexes. As Ukraine's economy struggled and salaries were very low, especially for workers in certain industries such as teachers and doctors, people often found their way around their lack of income to have a proper standard of living. We had to go to extremes because our children are barely surviving. Sometimes this has meant informal work on the side, but in other cases it has meant taking bribes to supplement their income. All of this became the norm. In other words, a series of bad habits on all levels of society that have been very hard to break. This informal economy, combined with a system ruled largely by the oligarchs, has unfortunately been widespread in modern Ukraine. That doesn't mean that things aren't changing, in large part due to the Ukrainians that have been fighting and sometimes dying to change this system. There are two major events in Ukraine's history that show the resolve of the Ukrainian people to rid their country of corruption. The Orange Revolution in 2004, initially sparked by reports that the presidential elections had been rigged, grew into a full-fledged revolution in response to widespread corruption, slow economic growth, and the desire to build a more European country. Civil society's quick reaction to the fraudulent elections resulted in a victorious revolution and was seen as one of the early political awakenings in Ukraine. In the words of Ukrainian author Oksana Zabushko, voting for Yushchenko was not simply Ukraine's European choice, but its chance to slay the Ukrainian part of that old, corrupt Soviet-era dragon. Then, in 2013, came the Euromaidan revolution, the event credited with being the single most consequential event in Ukraine's modern history. Protests began in November 2013 after then-President Viktor Yanukovych, a notoriously corrupt political figure, refused to sign the long-awaited association agreement with the European Union, shortly thereafter receiving a loan from the Kremlin. The protests would turn into a revolution that lasted until February 2014, ending with Yanukovych fleeing to Russia. More than a hundred people, who are now known as the Heavenly Hundred, were murdered while standing up to tyranny. It started as a response to a government decision, turned into a revolution that stood up to widespread corruption, police violence, and abuse of power by Yanukovych and his allies. What followed the revolution was a series of economic, institutional, and political reforms aimed at bringing the country closer to the European Union and farther from its past and history with corruption. Among the various reforms were changes to the police, a famously corrupt institution in Ukraine in the past, the creation of an asset declaration system for public officials, and an electronic procurement platform called ProZoro. Ukraine's online procurement system ProZoro helped save over 50 billion hryvnia of the budget money so far. The reforms also created four anti-corruption institutions, the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, the National Agency for Prevention of Corruption, the Special Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office, and the High Anti-Corruption Court. Since then, Ukraine has seen its scores improve in international rankings and has been slowly inching its way up in Transparency International's Corruption Perception Index. The World Bank Doing Business Survey in 2020 placed Ukraine 64th among 190 countries. In Doing Business 2014, Ukraine ranked 112th out of 189 countries. This does not mean that these changes have been perfect, and in many ways they have not brought the sweeping changes people hoped for. Until the full-scale invasion changed life for everyone, oligarchs kept their grip on large swaths of the economy. The informal economy still exists in Ukraine, and many transactions are still done in cash, which can open the door more easily for corruption. Ukraine still has a lot of work to do, but believe me when I say there are many Ukrainians working tirelessly to expose corruption in the hopes of changing the country for the better, even now, during a full-scale war. So why did I feel the need to tell you about all of this? So that you'll think twice when you hear these sweeping generalizations that Ukraine is the most corrupt country in the world. Or even worse, that because there's corruption in Ukraine, the country doesn't deserve help fighting off its vicious neighbor that has come to destroy it. Yes, there are problems with corruption in Ukraine. But Ukrainian society is young, still developing, still working things out. Old habits die hard, but they're not impossible to break.